Friday. Got to get down on Friday with some hot news. Welcome back, everybody. We got an existential question of the day for you, which is, would Lightning McQueen buy car insurance or life insurance? Lightning. I need answers. Disney, come on. Okay, I know it's your worst performing brand in your Pixar lineup, but I need, I need facts. Okay. Also, don't forget to check out our new merch at the link in the video description. It's nice. It's soft. It's lovely. Buy it. Support us. Get some good representation on your chest. And with that being said, let's jump into the title article, which is just AMD announced a lot yesterday. So we mentioned in yesterday's hot news about how AMD was going to have their financial analyst day where they were going to talk about stuff for shareholders and that there was a rumor surrounding that AMD might actually unveil some information regarding our DNA 2 and what's going on with their graphics cards. And boy, howdy, did they? Obviously, we didn't get a product announcement. We just got some detailing of the next generation architecture, although we did technically get a product unveiling and I'll cover that in a little bit. So first up is AMD talked about our DNA 2, which will be here this year. Obviously that has already been confirmed because Microsoft has said that they're using RDNA 2 in their Xbox Series X, which is coming out in holiday 2020. So it was already known it was coming out this year, but they made it sound like they're going to bring it out for desktop consumer grade stuff. So that's going to happen. And they also unveiled RDNA 3, which is going to be on an advanced node, whereas RDNA 2 is gonna be on seven nanometers. So the key things to look at from RDNA 2 is one, AMD is calling it Navi 2X. We don't know what that means, whether it's just the Navi twice over or double the performance. Not really clear why they called it Navi 2X, but that is there. They also said that they're getting about a 50% bump in performance per watt from the regular RDNA, which was already a 50% bump from performance per watt over GCN. So AMD continuing to make strides there. And on top of that, we're getting variable rate shading, which is a good technology that's coming out. And then AMD finally confirmed hardware accelerated ray tracing will be in RDNA. A2. So they will be able to finally support Microsoft DXR, which is how we're getting ray tracing in all of the Windows games that are currently out there. One key thing to think about that AMD didn't necessarily talk about is that DXR is a Microsoft implementation. So will that only mean that DXR is going to be on the Xbox Series X or will PlayStation have access to that for developing ray tracing on their console because they will have the hardware with it. They've already confirmed hardware accelerated ray tracing with the PlayStation 5. So it's just a matter of how are they going to implement it? What APIs are they going to use? How will it be developed? And then everything on top of that with RDNA 3, they're calling it Navi 3X. They're saying that it's going to be somewhere in the time of 2022 with not a whole lot of information going on there. Navi 2X should be this year. Navi 3X within 18 months to 24 months after that. What that exactly means of performance, we're not quite sure. One of the things that we had a question about on yesterday's stream was with the new process nodes for RDNA RDNA 2, RDNA 1's on 7 nanometers, it says RDNA 2 is on 7 nanometers, whereas before it would show on their slide that it was 7 nanometers plus. Thankfully, a non-tech actually got to clarify that with AMD, and basically they said that they're just not specifying so as not to cause any confusion. It's still 7 nanometers, but it should be based on the most advanced node of 7 nanometers at the time of production, which TSMC has three different ones. They have the regular, then they have the second generation of the regular, and then they have 7 plus, which is EUV which is extreme ultraviolet lithography. So they have different ways of going about it. AMD was just like, we're not saying what it is, but it will be whatever is the most advanced, which right now would be seven nanometers EUV. And then on top of that, AMD also announced an entirely new architecture that's going to split off of RDNA and it's gonna be called cDNA for compute. And that's going to focus on their high-end data centers, their high-end compute lineups and going to separate from the normal setup. Whereas with NVIDIA, what we get is typically one architecture that spans over both and with AMD, it's been that way for a while. Now AMD is announcing that cDNA will be for the high-end stuff and then rDNA will be the consumer level gaming stuff. And so we won't really see them cross-pollinate. Whereas uh, I think the only time Nvidia did that was with the Volta architecture. We never really saw that come out to consumers. That was only high-end data centers. This is actually a huge thing for AMD to actually have the R&D budget to split off into two different architectures to develop both of these at the same time. So good job. 
job on them for making enough money to actually split our DNA and cDNA. And then on top of that, I talked about how there was potentially a card revealed, even though it wasn't necessarily brought out or called out by AMD, but in their slides that they were using, they showed this like weird reference design that looks very similar to what's on NVIDIA's reference design with the actual multi-fan design instead of the blower fan. And on top of that, in an AMA that AMD did on Reddit afterwards, they said that indeed they are ditching the reference blower design for good. If you see a blower design, it's not gonna come from AMD and that they will all have axial designs from now on. So this is what likely is going to be the next generation of AMD cards. This is what it's gonna look like. The 5950 XT might be what it's called. Navi 2X, hopefully double the power of the 5700 XT to get us 4K 60 FPS gaming. As long as it's brought in at a price of like $600, it'll crush the market because Nvidia doesn't have that. Obviously they can make it happen, but that's a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, we got a lot of good things about AMD's GPUs. They're still moving forward. They're still on track to bring us more RDNA 2 happening this year. So we should expect new GPUs from AMD this year. Well, now we just need to wait until March 23rd to see if Nvidia is gonna bring us a new architecture and we'll be live streaming that event, their GTC keynote happening March 23rd. So stay tuned for that. And then on top of all the GPU news, AMD talked about the roadmap for Zen showing off that they are still on track for Zen 3 and Zen 4, which should come out in sometime 2021, 2022 territory, which will be based on five nanometers. Zen 3 is gonna be also on seven nanometers and is slated for this year. AMD confirmed that there will indeed be a Zen 3 launch this year. However, they only confirmed that with Epic. It's still possible that we might see one on a consumer grade desktop. We might get a Ryzen 4000, but they confirmed that Epic will indeed be upgrading to Zen 3 sometime this year. So that's going to happen. But one of the things that Reese and I were talking about while we were live streaming yesterday was the fact that it doesn't seem like there's a lot of hype around the next generation Zen CPUs, just because it seems like everybody's kind of satisfied with what they got out of Zen 2. Everybody really loves their 3600 and 3700Xs. So, I mean, we'll see if this actually needs to even happen this year, or if people can wait until 2021 to get new AMD CPUs. And then on top of that, AMD talked about a couple of new things, including cross 3D chip stacking, where they're gonna be able to layer stuff instead of having it in 2.5D stacking on an active interposer, and also how they're gonna have infinity architecture, replacing the word infinity fabric with architecture, and how they're gonna have up to eight-way GPU with coherent connectivity with their third generation of AMD infinity architecture. What that means, we'll have to figure out. It's more gonna be in a data center environment where multiple GPUs can connect with a single CPU so that they can actually bring out high-end compute servers. And we'll leave links in the video description for you to check out all of that because it goes a bit over the pay grade of what we cover here on Hot News. Some of these cases are so perplexing, they're well beyond my pay grade. But then, I'm sure a lot of you have been asking, yeah, great, RDNA 2, RDNA 3, Navi 2X, Navi 3X, cool new design. What about the drivers, okay? AMD, your drivers suck. That's what you're saying, okay? I'm just, I'm, I'm channeling you right now. You're angry at AMD for their drivers. Well, they silently, in a blog post yesterday, posted 40 different fixes for their drivers, addressing a lot of the complaints that were in there in their drivers. And so hopefully AMD is actually working on this. They said that they were indeed going to be pursuing that in 2020, trying to make sure that their adrenaline drivers are not crap, at least according to their blog post, it should be happening. You should be able to update your AMD drivers and get fixes for some common bugs that are out there. Let me know if this actually works for you. Let me know if the latest drivers are better than the previous drivers. We'd love to hear from our audience on this. But AMD not only talking about great stuff at the Financialist Analyst Day, saying that they're gonna be just wrecking the competition for the next five years, but also addressing all the issues that are here now. So they're both here and there then. And then one more little thing that is out there that AMD didn't confirm, but somebody found in some CPU support list over on Gigabyte. We talked about in a previous hot news how the Ryzen 5 1600 got a 12 nanometer upgrade to actually be roughly close to a Ryzen 5 2600 in performance. Well, it seems like the Ryzen 3 1200 is getting the exact same treatment where it's going to be based on 12 nanometers instead of 14 nanometers and will likely have some sort of efficiency upgrade and be more like a Zen Plus CPU instead of an original Zen CPU. It's not known when this will happen, if it's going to happen, what's going on, because it's just in a CPU support list, but having a Ryzen 3 1200 AF would be dope AF. But what's sad AF to me is that SETI at home is shuttering their doors to stop having distributed compute come into their home or their home, 
the research home because they have said that they're, they're just out of work. They don't have, like we've done all of the computation that they needed. There's not enough data coming in that needs to be processed. So they're just gonna put it on pause right now. They're saying on March 31st, SETI at Home will be in hibernation. And if you're not familiar with what SETI at Home is, it's distributed computing for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. That's what SETI means, where they take in data from all of the different satellites here on Earth and then try to find out if their signals and making sure that anyways, this is one of the very earliest forms of distributed computing that I did many, many moons ago. I think this originally opened in 2000. I remember doing this when I was like a wee lad on his PC, giving some of my processing power to SETI. This is before Bitcoin. Bitcoin was invented in 2008. SETI at home was doing distributed computing for a long time. Obviously, there's also folding at home, which SETI at home is saying that they do recommend that you look into other projects for your distributed computing. And folding at home recently announced that they are using some of their efforts to try to fight Voldemort. And so you could potentially uh, give your computer power to that in case you're interested, which we'll leave a link for everything. And then let's talk about another thing, which is the dude behind Auto, which is an autonomous driving car company that was founded by a previous Waymo engineer. Well, he has been ordered to pay Google $179 million for stealing some of their IP from Waymo and using it to start up his startup of Auto. There's that. Do you want to be in space? We've already talked about how space tourism is a thing that's happening. Well, now SpaceX has a contract with another company company that's going to bring space tourists to the International Space Station sometime soon, probably in the second half of 2021. This is happening with a company known as Axiom, where people are going to go up. They're going to be up there for 10 days, and they're going with an Axiom company employee who's going to make sure that they don't screw with anything on the ISS. So basically, they get to get a 10-day vacation, I guess, on the ISS, where you just get to look at the Earth, but then it's not necessarily all that exciting because, like, your sweat stays on you and, like... I've heard horror stories of astronauts. I don't know that this would be a vacation I would take. Would you go on the ISS? Let me know down below in the comments. I moved to Mars though, I tell you that. I don't know if I'd go on holiday on a space station. And then do you care about your data? Probably not, because you're just a modern person. Well, DuckDuckGo thinks that you need to change your ways and they've officially publicly unveiled their data that they've been collecting for a while to see how many web trackers are out there. And in the public list, they've shown thousands of trackers that a bunch of companies are using to track you across the web. And if you use Tor plus a VPN plus Brave Browser plus DuckDuckGo plus other things, nobody's ever going to be able to find you. And you're not going to be able to find HBO at South by Southwest because they've pulled out because of Voldemort. Another company taking out South by Southwest still hasn't canceled yet. They're saying that they're following the updates day to day. At this point, I mean, I think it's pretty easy to call this one. We're just waiting on the Olympics. Speaking of Olympics, athletes. And speaking of athletes, e-athletes. Speaking of e-athletes, streamers, Segue. Twitch finally has announced a deal that they've signed, a multi-year deal for exclusivity rights with one of their streamers. This is obviously coming after Ninja and other high profile streamers signing with Mixer and Facebook Gaming and then pulling people off of the Twitch platform. Twitch has announced a multi-year deal with Pokimane. She's staying on that platform and she is in the top 10 of largest streamers on Twitch. She's the largest female streamer, so this is a big win for Twitch. Speaking of other video game stuff, the PS4 exclusive goes to Shushima. Tsushima. Wow, my mouth is a hard time with that one. It finally has a release date, probably going to be the last PlayStation 4 exclusive to come out before the next generation of consoles, and it's going to happen on June 26th. And then speaking of space, I so totally should have put this next to the SpaceX one and the City at Home one. Anyways, the Mars rover, the Curiosity rover, now has a 1.8 billion pixel image that you can go and explore. NASA put that out there. It's two gigabytes. You can go look at the Martian landscape. They also released a VR video. So in case you want to explore Mars with your eyeballs, you can do that now thanks to the Curiosity rover. Was it the Curiosity rover that like played happy birthday for itself and it was super sad and depressing? I think it was that one, yeah. Yeah, sad. Anyways, that's the end of this haul. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Check out our merch at the link in the video description. Would Lightning McQueen need to buy car insurance or life insurance? I need the answers. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Weird thoughts, brain bad.